Endometrial adenocarcinoma is the commonest female genital tract cancer in Western countries. It tends to occur between the ages of 55 to 65 and is rare in women below the age of 40. The usual presentation is with postmenopausal bleeding or irregular menstrual bleeding. This large mass distending the endometrial cavity is an example of an endometrial adenocarcinoma. By far the most common type of endometrial adenocarcinoma is the endometrioid adenocarcinoma. It is called endometrioid because of the close resemblance to endometrium. Serous adenocarcinomas or papillary serous adenocarcinomas account for approximately 15% of endometrial adenocarcinomas and these carcinomas are very aggressive. Consequently, it is important to distinguish between serous adenocarcinoma and endometrioid adenocarcinoma because the endometrioid variety is less aggressive than serous and treatment is slightly different. There are of course a number of other types of endometrial adenocarcinoma including clear cell adenocarcinoma and carcinosarcoma or malignant mixmullerian tumour, sometimes referred to as MMT. This is the histological appearance of an endometrioid endometrial adenocarcinoma, clearly resembling endometrium. Endometrioid endometrial adenocarcinomas arise on a background of endometrial hyperplasia and this is caused by unopposed oestrogen stimulation. This may be caused by obesity, polycystic ovaries, oestrogen replacement treatment and also tamoxifen can cause endometrial hyperplasia and result in endometrial adenocarcinoma of the endometrioid type. These tumours are also associated with infertility, diabetes, hypertension and patients with Cowden and Lynch syndromes are at increased risk of endometrioid endometrial adenocarcinoma. Patients with polycystic ovary syndrome have an increased risk of developing endometrioid endometrial adenocarcinoma. At the top of the picture is a polycystic ovary and at the bottom the white area above the endometrial cavity is an infiltrating endometrial adenocarcinoma. Endometrioid adenocarcinoma results as a continuum of changes. So to start with, unopposed oestrogen stimulation will cause the previously normal endometrium to become hyperplastic. This may be simple or complex. Eventually this may become atypical and then adenocarcinoma may develop. The challenge for the pathologist, of course, is firstly to determine when hyperplasia has become atypical and then if the atypia is simply atypia or adenocarcinoma. This is an example of endometrial hyperplasia. And this is an example of endometrioid adenocarcinoma with a clearly abnormal glandular architecture where many of the glands have fused. And this is a higher power view of the adenocarcinoma. Endometrioid adenocarcinomas are graded 1, 2 or 3 with grade 1 being better differentiated and less aggressive than grade 3. In contrast to endometrioid adenocarcinomas, serous adenocarcinomas tend to occur in a slightly older age group than the endometrioid. African-American women have an increased risk of serous adenocarcinomas. 
in contrast to endometrial adenocarcinomas that arise on the background of hyperplasia, the serous adenocarcinomas arise on the background of endometrial atrophy. And there may be a precursor lesion known as serous intraepithelial carcinoma. These tumours, as I said before, are aggressive, high-grade tumours. They are associated with a p53 gene mutation. And also there is an increased risk of serous adenocarcinomas in patients with a BRCA1 gene mutation. This is the histological appearance of a serous adenocarcinoma of the endometrium, very similar to serous adenocarcinomas of the ovary or peritoneum. The tumour cells are high-grade, pleomorphic, forming papillae, and in many cases, somoma bodies can be seen. In fact, on the right side of the picture, there is a somoma body. Here is another example of a serous adenocarcinoma of the endometrium, and this has been stained for P53. P53 is a very useful way of distinguishing serous adenocarcinomas from endometroid adenocarcinomas that do not stain for P53. To summarise prognostic features of endometrial adenocarcinomas, good prognostic features are low stage and low grade endometrioid adenocarcinomas. Poor prognostic features include high grade endometrioid adenocarcinomas, endometrial carcinomas with high stage and serous adenocarcinomas, carcinosarcomas or MMTs and clear cell adenocarcinomas are associated with worse prognosis. This is an example of a carcinosarcoma of endometrium, so called because it has malignant glandular components and you can see a malignant gland on the left of the picture and this lies in an area of sarcoma characterised by malignant spindle cells. No prizes for working out what sort of tumour this is. It is composed of cells with clear cytoplasm and it is of course a clear cell adenocarcinoma of endometrium.